Well, good evening. Welcome to this installment of Pastures on the Porch for September 30th, uh, 2020. Uh, we've made it through another month. We've made it through another time of uh, change. Made it through another time and place of adaptation. I think that is a word that we as a faith community have had to adopt and an idea that we've had to impart. Um, click this here. Get that off my screen. Now. But what that has done for us as a faith community has allowed us to learn how to worship in a different way. Learn how to worship in ways that we never thought would be possible. In ways that we never thought not only possible, but that we would find ourselves doing. That brings me to a couple of announcements today. For those of you that are tuning in in North Carolina, by now you have probably heard we went on into phase three of the reopening of the state plan. And we are, I am anxiously awaiting what that means for the church from the bishop. Um, as of this broadcast, I have not received any communications from them. I've been poring over the 21-page um, executive order that was released this afternoon and been trying to figure out exactly what it means for us. But until the bishop and the cabinet and the offices of the Western North Carolina Conference tell me what that means to them, we are in a temporary holding pattern. But that being said, in our holding pattern, we are able to worship outside. And what we are able to do is what we are going to do on October 4th, this coming Sunday at 6 p.m., we will have a drive-in, socially distanced, outdoor evening service of scripture and song. And that is going to include uh, the reading of some scriptures, four to be exact, um, listening to some hymns, some ad adaptations of hymns, and some contemporary music, Christian music slipped in there. And then also we have uh, been able to work a way to have a service of communion, a sanitized service of of communion that is uh, within the bounds of all of the rules and regulations it means it's going to look a little different uh, it's going to mean it's going to taste a little different but it is going to be a time where we can commune together on what will be world communion sunday so i invite you to the mount lebanon united methodist church parking lot that is at 119 West River Drive in Randleman, North Carolina. Come on down and we're going to have uh, some amazing worship and uh, maybe a little bit of fellowship uh, across the parking lot. So be able to see some of our friends we haven't seen in a while and be able to uh, worship together, which is something that we haven't been able to do in way too long of a time and I know that a lot of us are wanting to get back into that swing of things. So I invite you out uh, uh, Sunday, October 4th at 6 p.m. in our parking lot and we'll have, uh, we'll have an amazing time of uh, worship and song and being able to connect with uh, Christ as a community and a congregation again. So that all being said, where we find ourselves and the adaptation I don't know about you but they didn't teach me any of this in school I know the teachers they didn't get taught how to do uh, teaching virtually in school I I never even dreamed that I would be doing ministry over the internet and over uh, TV when I graduated from Duke Divinity School, and I don't think anybody in my cohort would uh, 
say that that was something that they saw in their future as a quote-unquote televangelist or a uh, person that would be able to uh, be ministering over TVs and over the internet and such. So it's been a weird time of adaptation, but in that time, we've been able to see and hear God in a different sort of way. We've been able to take the building out of God. And what I mean by that is the church isn't the physical structure that we meet in. The church isn't the physical property that we meet on. Instead, the church is those individuals that have the presence of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in and through each of them. And when we as individuals see and feel the power of Christ apart from mass gatherings or groups or congregational gatherings, when we can have those feelings, when we can have those moments, when we can have that time of us and Christ, we learn how important that relationship is. We've had to adapt that relationship. For so many of us, including myself, that time of worship was when that moment would happen. I remember many, many days when I was at Duke and I would be in the chapel of the Divinity School. And we'd be in the midst of worship. And I would just get kind of a pins and needles feeling or even a shiver up and down my spine or just a knowing that I was worshiping God. God was in the place. God was in the presence. And because of that, because of those feelings and those, that physical reaction that I got in those places and in that specific place, I always knew and still know that when I'm able to go back there, I will be able to encounter God. And I know for so many of us, that is our sanctuary. That is our sanctuary of our home church. That is our sanctuary of our church that we attend on a regular basis. That is, that is the place where we have our pew that we sit in and know that that's going to be our spot. This six months, almost seven months now, has taught us that that's not what that spot is. We may be able to recognize, and we may have those moments, and we may feel those feelings in those places. But those are just places. The encounter can occur no matter where we are. The encounter can happen when we are sitting in our living rooms. The encounter can happen while sitting in our basements huddled against a computer because we need the sound system to work just right. But in each of these situations, we've adapted. God has even adapted for this situation. God has led us as pastors to be able to do new things to reach out in different ways, to spread our wings and try new technology. I've gone through, I don't know how many sets of cables and technology and lights and cameras and actions in order to be able to provide a service in which you as the congregant feels like they are in the church and I can't thank enough David and Annette for all of their support and the changing of the uh, altar guild and such at Mount Lebanon so when I do go live those things have changed out the flowers have changed the wreaths have changed the presence has changed so you know that 
we as the church are still together in this time. We know that God is present with us. We know that God is present with us each and every single day. It's just how we recognize that presence. And we've had to adapt ourselves to recognize that presence a little bit differently. We, aren't, we haven't been able to have those moments in the sanctuary in which we get that chill down our spine when we hear that specific song or that specific hymn played. We haven't had that moment of clarity when the pastor says something that all of a sudden makes a light bulb go off in our head and realize, oh, that's what Paul was talking about, or that's what Jesus was saying in those words, or that's the... I've read that for so many years and never looked at it in that way. Instead, we've been reading and looking our, on our own at the scriptures. We've been having our devotional time by ourselves. And I want you to know that God has been present in each of those moments as well. The scripture says that wherever two or more are gathered, I will be there. And quite frankly, the way I read that, if the Holy Spirit is in that place, that's two people, two presence, two, two that are gathered. So Christ is there with you. So we haven't lost God in this time. We haven't lost worship in this time. Some of what we've lost is the tradition of this time, in this time. And as much as I'd like to say that that tradition will all come right back, I honestly can't. I would be lying if I did. Because tradition, the traditional worship as we knew it on March 8th isn't coming back quite yet. When we are allowed to regather, there will be an adapted worship. There will be an adapted way in which we get together. What that is going to look like is going to look very similar to what I present and what has been presented on our weekly internet feeds through Facebook Live and through YouTube. But what that is also going to look like is the community of God coming together and knowing that even though things have changed, God is still with us. God is still with us. God has never left us. And God will never forsake us. For we are God's children. Adaptation is hard. New is hard. Change is hard. And I realize that. But if we all work together, and we all understand that this is just a blip in our history, a blip in our traditional history, we can get through this together. We can have great worship. We can have a time where we can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in and through each and every one of us. And yes, you may or may not be in your individual spot when we regather. But know that the Holy Spirit isn't, doesn't have a seating chart. The Holy Spirit doesn't require you to be in the same spot each and every time. The Holy Spirit moves in and through you no matter where you are located. So if it's a time when you just don't feel comfortable coming back yet to the worship when we are able to open, 
Know that I'm not going to change anything in what I do. You're not going to be missing out on the service itself. Instead, I will be broadcasting in the same fashion. Those that are in the in-person worship will see the mayhem that ensues when I have, and I'm trying to run two or three different computers and doing everything for the worship and for the live stream. Because believe me, it's a, it's a uh, show just to see that. But know that God is with you. Whether you're at home, safely quarantined, safely isolated, safely knowing that you aren't ready to go out into crowds. God is with you there just as much as God has gathered with you in a congregational setting. So I want everybody to know that even when we open up, there's going to be safety precautions in place. There's going to be places and times where it doesn't seem like the church that you left on March 8th. But that's part of the adaptation process. That's part of the process of adapting to the situation that we are in right now. The situation that is not made of God, but instead made of this world. We as a congregation need to come together both physically and virtually for a time to care for each other, to pray for each other, to love each other, and love the community that we live in and the communities that we live in. Each of us is called to our own individual calling. Each of us has been told by God what we are to do. And God lets us know, even in these times where things have changed, what we are to do. So in closing tonight, I want to pray. I want to let everybody know that I love them. I care for them. And I care for each and every one of you. And that is why we are kind of taking the, well, no, not kind of, that is why we are taking this very methodical approach. I've read too many articles and had too many situations of churches and gatherings that have happened and a cluster has formed because of them. Know that I want no one to get sick because a service that was held, or an event that was held. We will be doing the event, as I said, on October 4th at 6 p.m., but know that we are taking all the precautions set forth in order to, for your and my safety, because that is what it's all about. It's about the safety and health of our entire congregation. Locally, we've lost in the zip code of Randleman, we've lost, uh, I think I read six individuals that lived in the zip code of 27317. That's six too many individuals to have lost. We have what, we've had a few hundred cases and that's way too many cases in this town. So know that everything we are doing as a congregation and as a church conference is done for the protection of 
all of the congregants throughout the conference and throughout the entire Methodist Church. We don't want to make the news for the wrong reasons. So if we can stay strong, stay with God, and adapt to what we have been given, we'll be able to make the news for the right reasons when we are able to start back like we kind of were. And maybe even have an opportunity to restart even better and give ourselves a chance to restart as the same congregation but in a different mindset. So, as we close this evening, I want to offer up prayers for those that have lost loved ones to the uh, Carl Allred family who uh, we lost this week. Um, I heard today um, that we have had a positive case at Randleman High School. So I want to raise up all of those at uh, the high school. Uh, I want to raise up uh, all those that are attending Appalachian State. I know we've got quite a few congregational family and friends that are in attendance at Appalachian State. And uh, we lost a sophomore at Appalachian State to COVID this week. Um, raise them up. Uh, and we lost a active pastor to complications related to COVID from the uh, Western North Carolina Conference uh, serving in Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. And I would like to raise up uh, his family tonight. Please, please send me any prayer requests. I will put them out um, this broadcast well I guess if you're watching this on the YouTube you'll know it won't be until tomorrow morning I left my computer at the office um, so it won't be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow until tomorrow morning but uh, I apologize for that but uh, let us go to a time in prayer Lord as we gather here together virtually times when maybe we as individuals are separated by distance but we're not separated because you are present in each and every one of us. Lord, we gather in this adaptive way, this way that we've has become almost normal for us. But we gather for one reason. It's not to hear the word proclaimed but it's to hear your word and your words said to us so that we may as individuals hear you we may react to you we may be children that hear see and do for you Lord Lord it's been a weird week, a weird month, a weird year for all of us. As we go forth this through the rest of this week, protect us for those that have been exposed to COVID this week at the Randleman High School. Protect those students, those teachers, and those faculty and staff members. Give them the wisdom to do what's right and do what they are asked to do. Be with their families as they have a hard time quarantining, possibly even within the same house. Lord, be with all those students that have lost a friend, that have lost a fellow cohort at school, that have lost a student at App State. Allow them to grieve in their own ways and be with them during this grieving and mourning time. Lord, be with the pastor and the family in Shady Grove, North Carolina. 
the loss is immense. There's a missing piece now in that community. A missing piece of that puzzle. Be with them as they mourn and as they, as a church and as a congregation and as a community, deal with this loss. Lord, be with the Allred family as they mourn the loss of their loved one. And Lord, be with those that are fighting the fires out west, that are in the southeast and Gulf Coast, cleaning up after the floods and the rains. Be with the first responders throughout the United States and throughout the world. Be with all the leaders of the world as they are making these tough decisions. From pastors and businessmen to cities and villages and towns and counties and states and countries. Lord, be with all of these leaders as we, your children, look to you for the wisdom and knowledge as to what to do next. Give us the, the knowledge and the, the stick to itness to know that though it's hard, though not everyone will be happy, we know that you are in these decisions. And these decisions are made for the safety and security of all of your children. So guide us this week guide us every week, and guide us as we, as your children, make these decisions, make these choices, show this love, and care for these communities. Let us have the caring love and compassion that you had when you walked this earth. For if we can have just part of that, we will be living into the commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves. For that is the commandment that we are to live to this day, this time, and this adapted presence that we have each and every day. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name who gave his life for us, his children. Amen. Peace be with all of you, blessings be with all of you, and remember, October 4th, 6 p.m., come out, hang out, sing some songs, share some communion, and listen to some scripture. Love you all. Blessings.